Hey, Scott Sambucci here, Chief Sales Geek over at Sales Quality, and today we're going to talk about number three, the third sales accelerator. So the sales accelerator are the sales accelerators are the uh, the nine core systems that every startup needs to build and run in order to ramp up and scale up their sales process. And number and today what we're going to talk about is number three, a lead qualification strategy, a lead qualification strategy. So let's start off by talking about like most importantly why. Do you need a lead qualification strategy? And what happens if you don't have a lead qualification strategy? So let me know if this may sound remotely familiar. Uh, lead comes in, goes to your website, requests a demo. Demo gets booked. You spend 45 minutes or an hour on the demo. You get lots of applause. Fireworks go off. People say, wow, that was really great. Can you send me a proposal? And you get really excited. And you go, wow, this is really great. And then you spend how many hours, days, weekends, working on the proposal, you send over the proposal, the person says, great, I got it, let me run up the flagpole. And then you end up spending weeks or months chasing that deal, chasing that lead, only to finally get them to get back to you to tell you, like, hey, we're not interested right now, not sure if this is gonna be a good fit for us, check out, check in with us in queue never, right? So the problem is, if the, the whole problem started in that situation, and I'm, I'm guessing that might have sounded familiar for at least one or two people here, that, that whole situation started just because you didn't have a lead qualification strategy in place. So what's really critical, and this is one of the reasons that lead qualification is one of the nine sales accelerators, is that if you are qualifying your leads, it will speed up your sale for the right fit leads and the right fit prospects. And if you don't have a lead qualification strategy, what ends up happening is you play that game of demo proposal chase, demo proposal chase, and you're spending hours and weeks and months dealing with people who are never interested in making a purchase in the first place. So um, what I wanna do is show you exactly why you need to have a lead qualification strategy and what happens if and when you get that lead qualification strategy in place. So um, if you're still wondering, okay, like, but I don't wanna give up on the demo. Like I, we spent all this inbound marketing effort to get people to come to our website or you know, we're doing outbound and we're sending out emails to our target customers and we're getting replies and they say, hey, can I see a demo? They finally say yes to a demo. The outbound, the outbound sequence is working. People are booking a demo. Uh, why would I, like, I don't wanna scare those people away, right? I'm the one that contacted them or they came to the website and requested the demo. Like, why, why would I put myself in a situation where I might push them away? Or they say, no, I don't, I don't wanna have that lead call. I don't have that qualification call or that initial discovery call. I just wanna see the demo. Like you might be asking, why, why would I do that, right? Well, think about it from this perspective. If you went to a doctor, let's say there's something wrong with you, you know, you hurt your knee, you're not feeling well, uh, maybe you're getting migraines, whatever, you know, whatever it is, um, and you schedule that meeting with that doctor, would you as a patient, honestly, would you walk into that office, sit down in front of the doctor and say, all right, doc, tell me all about the medicines you got. And the doctor says, well, I'm, I'm not really sure what medicine would be right for you. I need to ask you a couple questions first. Would you say, no, I don't, I'm not going to answer any questions. Just tell me about your medicines. Tell me about your therapies. Tell me how you're going to make me better. Well, the doctor would never be able to do their job, right? They would never be able to prescribe for you the right medicine because they haven't diagnosed the problem. And that's why you've got to have a lead qualification system in place. You as the seller, it's your job to diagnose the problem of the buyer, to know even if you can help them. And if you can, how, that might work. And so what I wanna give you here is a, is a bit of a model that will help you understand the importance and how critical it is and what you get ultimately in your sales process when you actually implement the, a lead qualification system the right way. So there's three words that I always come back to when it comes to sales and a sales process. And those three words are, number one is clarity, we all want to get a lot more clarity in our sales process. We want to be more clear about who are the customers that we're targeting. We want to get clear about the messaging. We want to get clear on the problems that we're solving, right? We want to get a lot more clarity. Number two, uh, every salesperson, every founder, every VP of sales has, uh, has, has told me, I'd like to get more control of my sales process, right? I want to get more control. I don't want to be stuck chasing leads. I don't want to be stuck waiting for people to get back to me. I want to know what the next steps are. I want to have control of that sale. I want to have control of that conversation, right? And the third, the third word here is confidence. 
we deserve to have confidence when we're out there selling. We should be confident that we're solving problems for the right prospects. And our prospects should have confidence to know that, hey, when we're having that conversation and engaging with us as sellers, they should feel confident that we know what we're doing, right? You wouldn't go into a doctor's office and feel confident if they were unsure and not know what to do and didn't ask the right questions. And the moment that you walked in, all they did was prescribe some kind of medicine for you without really understanding your problem, like probably wouldn't be a very good doctor, right? And so when you get this lead qualification system working the right way, you get these three things. And more specifically, when, when we're talking about clarity, for me, for you, there's two sides to this, right? There's you as the seller, and then there's the prospect as the buyer. So when you've got a, a qualification strategy that's working for the seller, for you as a seller, the first thing, the first place where you get clarity is basically being able to answer the question, are they a fit? Is this prospect, is this a lead? Is it, a, are they a fit? If I'm qualifying that lead, from qualifying that situation, it's gonna allow me as a seller who sells this product every single day, who built this company to solve a specific problem for a specific type of customer. If I'm clear about whether or not they're a fit, then I've got a lot of clarity as to know whether or not I can even help this person. So that's one reason why you have to have a lead qualification system in place. Number two, when it comes to control. So think about the situation, let's say, let's imagine the situation where you've done lead qualification call and you've diagnosed the problem, and now the next step in the process is a product demo. You actually get to show the demo. The person has earned the demo, so to speak. The reason that having a lead qualification system gives you control, because it tells you what to demo. Because let's face it, your product has lots of stuff. It probably has lots of buttons, lots of features, lots of functionalities, lots of integrations, lots of cool things it can do, right? But does your prospect really care about all 75 features and functionalities and why the buttons are blue and not red? Of course not. What they care about is the problem and whether or not your product is going to solve their problem. And so without lead qualification, how are you going to know what to demo later on? So if instead you've done the lead qualification, you've understood their problem, you've done the needs analysis, then when it comes time to do the product demo, you can show only the pieces and parts of your product that are going to solve and be related to the problem that you're that your prospect has. So this is a control piece for you when you're going into that demo to know exactly what to show, what parts of your product are most relevant to that prospect's problem. So that's reason number two why you wanna have a lead qualification system in place. And number three, you need to have the confidence to say, no thanks, right? Not every person that comes to your website is a lead. Not every person that requests a demo should get the demo. Not every single person that you talk to as part of your outbound strategy is a good fit. And if you don't have this system in place, then how are you gonna know when to say no thanks to somebody who's not a good fit? And most importantly, being able to say no thanks to somebody in the sake of their time, because you're saving them time in, their, their, in the time that they're spending with you. So when you have this lead qualification system in place, you get clarity and control and confidence for you as a seller. Now let's talk about the buyer. So number one, when you're, when you're implementing this part of your sales process, number one for the buyer, it helps them get clear on what's the problem and what's the payoff when that problem is solved. If there's no problem and there's no clear payoff, then it doesn't matter how good your product is. It doesn't matter what the features and functionalities are. The problem is the only thing that the customer cares about. If there's no problem, there's no sale, right? And so we have to get clarity for the buyer. The buyer needs to tell us exactly what is the problem, what is the payoff. And oftentimes, if you're really good at selling, this lead qualification process will help the buyer get more clear on their problem. It will help the buyer get more clear on the payoff they would receive if they solved that problem, which then helps you get a lot more control in the sales process. And so for them, for the buyer, step two, that control piece, it helps them feel like how this will work for us because that buyer one of the things they're always worried about whenever they get into a product demo even though they've requested the demo they want to see the demo they might love the product but one of the one of the, the questions they're always going to be asking themselves is okay the product looks really cool it does all these things i love the feature set but how's it going to work for us and so if you've done a good job of qualifying that lead and asking good questions and discovering what the problems are 
then in that demo, you're going to be able to show specifically to that buyer how this is going to work for them. And that's going to give them a sense of control that, hey, I'm on the path to solving this problem. Okay. Now the third piece, confidence. If you're doing this the right way, what this is going to do is give your buyer, your buyer confidence to follow you, right? It's not their buying process. If you, if you're, if you don't, let's look at it this way. Um, if you don't have a process for selling, you're at the mercy of the buyer's process for buying. I'm going to repeat that. If you don't have a process for selling, you're at the mercy of the buyer's process for buying. So David Sandler uh, made that quote years and years ago, decades ago. He talked about the importance of having a selling process. And so when you show that you've got a process for diagnosing, for asking good questions, for understanding your buyer's problems, then that should give your buyer confidence to know like, oh, these guys have been here before. They're professionals. They get it. They're going to help me fix this problem. And when you show that you've got these systems in place, it's going to give your buyer confidence to follow you in your sales process, as opposed to them having to lead everything with their buying process. Okay. So ultimately, when you when you install this step, the last thing it's going to do is really help you check three key boxes for every single lead that comes in. So the number one is, is your buyer willing to engage? Right. We've all had that situation. Somebody requests the demo. And then you try to hop on a call with them before the demo or even bef even on that demo call. And you say, hey, listen, before I show the product, I just ask you a couple of quick questions about your company, about your situation, what brought you to our website in the first place. And we've all had that situation where the buyer's like, no, I'm not going to share any information. Just show me the demo, right? Just being a complete asshole, right? Well, it's our job, right? Do you want to work with those people? How can you possibly sell to somebody who's going to act that way? How could you possibly work? with somebody and solve their problems if they're not willing to engage with you and engage with your selling process because you are a professional. You are an expert in this problem. You are the doctor and they are the patient. So if when you have this lead qualification system in place, it allows you number one to test, is your buyer willing to engage with you? Are they really interested in, in understanding and clarifying their problems so you can know whether or not you can even help them in the first place? So that's number one. Number two, the second box we want to chat, we want to check here is, is your buyer willing to share? What I mean by that is, are they willing to share information about their situation? Are they willing to share information about the people around them that are also going to be getting involved with this decision? Because we all know there's no single point of contact, right? There's no one person that makes all the decisions. We all know in the enterprise world, there's going to be four or five or six or 10 or 20 different people that are going to get involved. Are they willing to share and help you understand who else in the organization is going to be getting involved with the situation, with this decision? Are they willing to share the history of that problem? Are they willing to share, hey, these are some of the solutions we've tried in the past that didn't work. This is the solution we're using right now, and here's where it's not working for us anymore. Are they willing to share? Right? If you don't have this lead qualification system, you can't step in and get that information. So you're never going to know if they're willing to share. So having that lead qualification system lets you test to know whether or not they are willing to share. And finally, the third thing, and this is the most important part about lead qualification is, do they deserve the demo? Do they deserve the demo? Just because people request a demo doesn't mean they get a demo. They have to deserve the demo. They have to earn the demo, right? And that's you having control. And that's you having clarity on the problem. That's you having confidence that your sales process works. People can request a demo, but they have to deserve it first. They have to earn it. And the way they earn it is by answering, uh, answering, asking, uh, answering questions for you, going through a qualification process, going through discovery, going through needs analysis. So you, as the professional, as the doctor, can diagnose the patient to even know if you're the right doctor for them. And if you're not, then you can move them in the right direction. And if you are, then you can talk about the medicine. Then you can talk about the next steps. Then you can talk about the therapy that needs to happen. But they have to deserve the demo. They have to earn it. And having a lead qualification system, a lead qualification strategy is going to help you check those three boxes to know whether or not people are willing to engage, are they willing to share, and do they deserve the demo. So that's it. That's why you got to have a lead qualification system in your sales process. Now, if you don't have one, or you know you should, and you really want to get some help on this, then maybe we can help you out. Uh, so you know, here at Sales Quality, what we do every single day 
is we help early stage B2B tech startups ramp up and scale up their sales process. And the way we do that is by helping them to define and install these systems, these nine sales accelerators. And so oftentimes when you work with startups, they might have two or three or four of these systems working, but they don't have all nine. Or a couple of the systems they have are just not working for them anymore because you've hit a certain growth stage where the old way isn't working and you need to find a new way. So if this is, sounds like a familiar trouble that you've got, if it's a problem in your sales process, then give us a call. You can shoot me a DM here in LinkedIn. Uh, you can send me an email, scott at salesqualia, Q-U-A-L-I-A.com. Um, or you can give me a phone call. Send me a text, 415-596-0804. That's my mobile number. Send me a text, 415-596-0804. And just say, hey, love to have a quick chat. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to qualify you. We're going to have a 15-minute chat, and it's going to be a lead qualification call. I'm just going to be completely open about it. And it's not anything about you, and it's not that I don't think that you're looking for help. It's just that I need to know if your situation is one that we can help with. And if we can, then we'll spend more time together. And if we can't, then I'll point you in the right direction. That's just the way it works. And this is the way it should work in your business too. So that's it for now. Let's make this happen, all right? Let's do this. See ya.